Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna take a break from everything that is terrible. Well, this is terrible in a more lighthearted way. We're gonna be watching some cringe. You guys told me about a TikTok account that I just had to look into and turns out I'd come across it, but I think my memory wiped it for my own well-being. Now before we get into the topic at hand, I just wanna put a little disclaimer out there. If these people are having fun doing what they're doing, happy for them. If we think about it, everything is cringe. Like surely I'm cringe to some people, my whole existence might be cringe and that's totally fine. They're entitled to have that opinion and have a laugh at my expense if they want to. We're not attacking them, we're not doing anything of the sort, we're just having a laugh at really, really uncomfortable content and that's the end of it. So to frame all of this, I think we should watch this video first just to kind of give you an idea for what we're in for. If I were you, I would take something like a stress ball, something you can like squish, so you can put all the discomfort into a little stress ball. As you might notice, I don't have a stress ball because the way I process things is I let them fester until they turn into a mental illness, but anyway. Before we get into this video, as you know, content like this is often demonetized, so I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is America's favorite adult store. Not only does it come with discreet packaging, but they also donate 20% of their profit to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. They also have a 24-7 customer service and have 90-day no-hassle returns. If you go to adamandeve.com and use code GLARE, you'll get 50% off one item and free shipping in the US and Canada. Thank you, Adam and Eve, for sponsoring this video. So I think it's highly probable that they are in fact not step-siblings, at least in my heart. I hope they are not, and if they are, I hope this is all an act because I don't know how I feel about all that. Again, they're allowed to do whatever they want, but the way that they're framing it this way and is just uncomfortable. And mind you, I've seen some funny TikToks that make fun of the pornography category because there's a big pornography category that is sibling type shit and step sibling type shit. So some people make fun of that category. But here there's no punch to the joke. So I don't know if it's a joke or if it's just like, haha, this is relatable. I don't know to who this is relatable, to a very small group of people who happen to be in relationships with their step siblings. Um, whether it's real or not doesn't really matter. I'm just talking about the message. I don't get it. If you are wearing headphones, I'm warning you now, you might want to lower the volume because this sound that you're gonna hear at the end of this clip truly has changed who I am as a person in a terrible way. Babe, wow, you look so good. You've never looked better, wow. What are you wearing? You don't respect the drip? No, that doesn't match. You should go change. <laughs> okay. Well, now that we're being honest, have you seen yourself? Look at this. Okay. What about terrible it? Terrible today. Anyway, I'm gonna go change. No, come back. You're hurting my feelings. That's so mean. Now I wanna cry. Okay, you look great. You look amazing. So hot. There is so much to unpack here. I. Their outfits, it looks like they're going to the country club, which is fine, but I just thought it was funny because it looks not what I'd expect young people to wear. But anyway, aside from that, I don't know about you guys, but the guy, the vibe I get from the guy in all of these videos and like other ones that I'm not gonna be showing here is that he always comes off as like, you know when there's a 40 year old who's dating like a 20 year old and they just have completely different verbiage. Like the terms they use are not the same and the tones they use are not the same. So you can tell that there's an age gap. I'm not saying there is an age gap, but it give me that vibe. When she's like, you don't match. She sounds like a petty young person. Whereas when he's like, oh, okay, well now that we're talking about it, you look terrible. And it's, it's just very weird because you can tell that they're close in age, but it just feels like he's that older guy who's with the young, partner. Does that make sense? Am I just the only one seeing this? Keep the volume down for this one too. Babe, you're not paying enough attention to me. Mm. Mm. Babe, I give you tons of attention. You're not paying attention to me. That's so mean. Mm. Who's my baby? Me. 
Who's my princess? Me. Who's the most annoying? Not me. <laughs> Not sure about that last one. No. What people want to do in the bedroom, as long as it's consensual, is none of my business. I feel like I'm talking more quietly as a result of the screeching. I apologize. But really, what you want to do in the bedroom, as long as it's consensual, I do not care. Go for it. That being said, I don't know if this is like a daddy little girl kink or if it's just baby talk. It makes me uncomfortable. I do not care to see it. You can share your kinks anywhere online, of course, unless you're like on something that's aimed for children. That being said, I do think that if you're posting your kinks on platforms that aren't about kinks, most likely you're gonna make people feel uncomfortable because unless someone signed up to TikTok to find the kink community to be part of, most of the people who want to talk about their kinks, show shit, that's on other websites. So I think like that's what's off-putting is that in my mind, I don't go to TikTok to see kinks. I go to see animals and renovations of homes or people being self-deprecating about mental illness. Those are the things I go to TikTok for. So I think like that's what kind of had me like, oh, I don't know if this is a kink. That's the way it came off. Also, I know that these are supposed to be skits, I guess, although they seem very inorganic like they seem very very much like if i were trying to act plot twist i don't know how to fucking act and i'd sound robotic if i did like if i were reading a script being like why are you not paying attention to me right now i am very hurt my emotions are hurt see this is not hollywood material also because i don't support pedophilia yeah so that was the vibe i kind of got but aside from that a lot of these tiktoks to me represent somehow toxic relationships because wanting attention from your partner normal being annoyed that they're not giving you enough attention when they likely are giving you enough attention to me indicates there's something else wrong. And it's also like how you demand for that attention. It's all an interconnected chain of things. So if it were just like one thing, it probably wouldn't be toxic. But a lot of the behaviors I see here, especially on her end, because he seems like the begrudging boyfriend who has to deal with a crazy girlfriend trope. And she's like the extremely demanding high maintenance girlfriend, which is another trope. And that's not really usually a healthy dynamic. We've seen it in a bunch of shows. It usually does not end well. So like, I don't know if that's what they were trying to represent, kind of like if we're talking about that 70s show like Jackie and Hyde, though they kind of improved. I'm not going to go into an analysis of that 70s show. Never mind. This one, in terms of acting, is by far just every time I watch it, my toes curl into my feet because of how tense I am. So just like doing little fists with my hands is not enough. Like I need to, as a human, retract into a shell that does not exist. Like I think I would be a great turtle because at least when I felt cringe, I could just be like... I'm, I'm out of here, but here the only thing I can do is be like Pay close attention to his mannerisms because I watched it multiple times just because I was like Whoa. What? Hey guys My boyfriend the alpha thinks that I cannot have any more guy friends and that they're not to be trusted That's right guys aren't to be trusted ever He wants me to cut all of them off, but why? Because they're always trying to get with you every second, you know any problem that we have they're gonna be right there. Okay, just do trying I... to insert themselves into our relationship. Do you want me to prove it to you? I'm actually gonna call yeah, Alessandro, my homie, okay? I'm gonna prove it to look, me. Go ahead. Look. I'm gonna call him. Put him on speaker. I'm gonna call him and tell him that we're broken up. See? When you need them, they're not there. They treat me as a bro. They don't even pick up. You've See, got a million I'm a bro. Friends. I'm a bro too. You have reached mailbox number six. Just try the next one. First of all, it's kind of weird that the message is that men aren't there for their guy friends because they're bros. This goes back to kind of toxic masculinity and the fact that men can't have emotions and that men aren't supportive by default, which is all crap. I mean, societally, I think there's a problem because when men are emotional, other people sometimes make fun of them, both men and women. But the concept that her guy friend not picking up means he's he only sees her as a friend, first of all, isn't doesn't mean anything. But aside from that, I also think, again, the message is kind of toxic because it's like a guy telling his girlfriend that she can't have guy friends because every guy by definition is trying to get with her. I think that's weird and manipulative because the bottom line message is saying like, I want to be the only guy in your life, 
even though those other guys are, you know, platonic and I'm romantic. I think this also brings up the argument of can men and women be friends, which is in and of itself a heteronormative argument because if you are bi, then technically you couldn't be friends with either. If you're gay, then you couldn't be friends technically with men and only with women according to the doctrine of men and women can't be friends or you can't be friends with a gender that you're attracted to, which I think is dumb because there are plenty of men and women who are friends and it never gets weird. That being said, there's also the possibility that someone develops feelings, but that goes for any type of orientation, whether it's two women, two men, two bisexual people, man and woman, you know, like it doesn't really discriminate just on the fact of being a man or being a woman. But the concept again is pretty toxic. So as much as like these are supposed to be, I guess, humorous skits, maybe I'm missing something, but I just feel deeply uncomfortable because they feel one, extremely rehearsed, two, they're not funny, and three, the underlying messages are not healthy. But if they were making fun of the underlying messages, that would be fine. But I think a lot of the best comedy has actually interesting underlying messages or they're making fun of some kind of trope so the underlying message is don't listen to this trope, it's stupid. Does that make sense? Okay, this one is I think maybe the most cringe so really just be ready, I don't even know what to tell you. Also, can I just say a lot of pranks I find pretty cruel and not funny. The funny pranks are the silly ones. It's not funny to pretend to be pregnant. It's not funny to pretend to have had a miscarriage. It's not funny to pretend to be cheating. Like all of those, I don't think are healthy jokes to play on someone because they are usually heavily emotional topics. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's kind of like, I would never make a joke out of someone dying being like, oh yeah, I got a call, your mom's dead. That's pretty much the equivalent of a lot of these jokes. This one isn't terrible, but I still don't think it's funny either. Maybe that's just because I'm a person with anxiety and when people make these types of jokes, I'm like, what the fuck was that for? But anyway. Hello? Hey, how are you? No, I can't hang out with you today. I'm just gonna hang out with a few of my friends today. I can meet with you on Saturday. No, I don't have a boyfriend, so I hang out with my friends. Who is this? I know you're afraid of the alpha. This guy hung up. This guy's Ready? soft. You're cheating on me with that? Somebody who can't even speak to the alpha? You can do a lot better than that. <laughs> it's a prank, babe. Oh yeah, haha, it's a prank. That wasn't rehearsed at all. That came off as supernatural, especially him making his voice all deep and weird. Yeah, that was totally a prank, babe. Haha, <laughs> caught you off guard. I actually have goosebumps on my legs and I get those when I'm in deep cringe or extremely angry and obviously this is deep cringe. I wonder if you can see them. I don't think you can see them. Anyway, I think that's enough for today. I think we have truly gone through it. I'm not about this. Like I said, it's just lighthearted. It's not that big of a deal, but I just kind of wonder who exactly they're trying to cater to because I can't really pinpoint what demographic would super go for this or think, haha, that's so funny and crazy. You guys can let me know in the comments down below. Do you actually think they're stepbrother and sister? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you to my patrons as always. Let's get right into the fan art.